if you saw the teaching flyer today um the teaching topic it's walking out your vision it's walking out your vision let's turn our bibles to genesis chapter 13 where we'll read from verse 14 to verse 15. before i do that let me just ask a simple question how many of you wrote your five-year vision and you brought it to church like we asked you to do if you did will you please stand just stand if you did just stand if you did yeah. just stand thank you this just keep standing this is the reason why no matter what someone does few people get results because there's a personal responsibility to it as a pastor i can only teach and pray for you but that it's not enough for you to get results all it takes is to write a five-year vision so i want to encourage you today if you've not written it, I'm going to give you one more week. I'll not pray today. Next week, Sunday. Next week, Sunday. Write it. Please, you can have your set. And let me just stay on it for a little while. People always say, some people say things like this. Oh, it's like, oh, wow. God is very slow, but when you go to a witch doctor, it's very fast. Stupid. But let me tell you why. But I understand what they're saying. The reason why they think God is very slow is this. The diligence they commit to what a witch doctor tells them is not what they commit to what God tells them. Is that not true? The diligence. So you see people, they, you know, they will tell, I mean, I've met people, I was telling them a story of I heard about someone that for 10 years, the, the instruction they gave him was this, had to do with his business. He had to sleep with different girls every night, every Thursday night. He had to sleep with different girls every Thursday night. And do you know how difficult that is for a human being? You may think it's exciting if you're young, you know, but just imagine you're in your 60s and you have compulsory sex. And the person does it, done it for 10 years, couldn't miss it. Some of them, no matter where they are, on Friday they must be at a certain place, no matter where they travel to. If you can just apply the same diligence and apply to the things of God, you will see a lot of results. Glory to God. All right. So Genesis. So we've been talking about vision and very, very powerful. We've been talking about vision and um, very, very powerful. So Genesis chapter 13 in verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after the Lord had separated unto from him, lift up thy eyes and i love that instruction lift up thy eyes it didn't say look around lift up thy eyes don't be consumed with things around you it said lift up your eyes and look from the place where at northward southward eastward and westward for all the land that you see to thee i will give it to you and to thy seed why is this important why is vision important you only go as far as you see sir you only go as far as you see your prayers will not even get there because you can't see it you only go as far as you see you only go as far as you see let me say something to you no man can arrive at a future he cannot see no man can arrive at a future he cannot see you only go as far as you can see so you are a businessman how far have you seen you know um there's a big supermarket you know called ebano which is around where we are right now but if you lived in bagada for some time ebano was this small supermarket that was there but even though it was small, I don't know the owner, but there was something he saw. Vision is not the private custody of believers. It's everybody's thing. It's if you can see. So the question today is, how far can you see? How far can you see yourself? How far can you see your career? How far can you see your business? How far can you see your objective? How far can you see your, the things you do? Because you're only going to go as far as you can see. No man arrives at a future he cannot see. No man arrives at a future he cannot see. So the first thing for your future is to see it. Sometimes I'm really challenged 
when I heard the stories of a lot of entrepreneurs and they will tell you how they started with this thing and they were looking for something big. No man arrives at a future he cannot see. And, and the reason I'm saying so to you is that some people say, they ask the question, you know what, pastor, I really want to live a great life. I really want to make a huge impact. What do I do? The first thing you have to do is to see it. God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, he says, all these things you see, he said, look at it, he says, as far as your eyes can see, I can give to you. What do you see? Do you see a picture of doom or you see a picture of increase? Your vision will even limit your prayer. Because if you dream small, you will pray small. If you think small, you will what? You will pray small just because of what you see. In our church, one of the things was about our church is this. We don't insult God with small thinking. Praise God. Oh my God, he didn't hear that. If this is your church, either you're watching online or you're offline, you need to know something. Once you chose to say you belong to Harvester's family, we don't insult God with small thinking because we believe that big thinking honors God. We believe that big vision honors God. We don't insult God with small thinking. We believe that big vision honors God. It's time to begin to ask God for things only God can do. The other day I wrote on social media and I saw Pastor Deboe put up a post. It said, learn to ask God for difficult things. It said, make it a habit. And because of the things around you, you can begin to shrink your dream. Maybe you're an entrepreneur and because it's so hard to raise the first five million, you're wondering, how will I get to 50 million? How will I wonder the first million dollars? Listen to me. The first thing you can do to yourself and vision is free. It's just in your imagination. The first thing you can do is to dream. Nobody has the power to take dream from you. Even when Joseph was a slave, Joseph kept the dream of leadership in his heart. The Bible says he was in a slave house and Joseph was blessed. Are you here today? Keep the vision in your heart. No one arrives at a future we cannot see. <laughs> one of the things I love about vision is that it makes you intentional in your living. Why? Living your life to chances gives you no chance in life. Oh, you didn't hear that. Living your life to chances gives you no chance in life. Living your life to chances gives you no chance in life. There is nobody that's made significant impact and left his life to chance and left his life to chances. No, sir. If you're going to live your life to chances, listen to me, you have no chance in life. And I'm saying this because this the reason I'm saying this. So I said, why is it so important to you? Because we live in an economy, sir, sir. So, this is the last time during the service. If you're sitting in that place, you'll go to the back and come back when I'm preaching. Is that okay? Yes, it's just water. You'll not die after 30 minutes. And ushers, help me take note of that. You know what I'm saying? So, some of you just discipline. What does it take to teach for 30 minutes? I don't want to stay on that because people are online. I would have stayed on it. Glory to God. the reason because we live in an economy we live in an economy where people don't value dreams you you will just say you will just say now vision will go chop how can people talk that way don't you know that we intentionally create our future listen to me we can have bad leadership but don't let someone steal your future don't let someone steal your vision we can have all the things don't let anyone steal your future because that's what you have you have the capacity to dream God looked at Abraham. He says, all these things I will give to you. But what can you see? When people have no future, everybody moves to Ghana, they move to Ghana. Everybody moves to Togo, they move to Togo. Everybody sells pure water, they sell pure water. Everybody starts a business, they start a business. But what do you want to do? Because they don't have what is their own purpose. All they are doing is looking at what someone else is doing and copying it. That's not what you want to do. When you don't have a vision, you can marry anybody. When you have a vision, vision makes you selective. 
See, vision makes you selective in how you live your life. Vision makes you selective in who you hang out with. In f- the reason why is this. The easiest way to destroy your life is to make sure you have the closest friends that have no ambition. You will ruin your life without planning it. Why? The moment you speak about vision and all the closest friends don't have vision, they will keep attacking your vision and pull you down to where they are. And I told you something. I said the first thing God wants to do when he wants to interrupt your life is to put you in a vision. He expands you with a vision. That's what he does. He expands you with a vision. He puts in you. He, he tells Gideon. Gideon was this scary person. He says, through you, I will send Israel. He expanded Gideon with that vision. This man, Scott Paul, was fighting and fighting and God appeared to him and said instead of being a fighter I will change your story and you to spread the gospel he changed Paul's life through a vision question you want to grow what vision can you accommodate that will expand you what vision can you accommodate that will expand you The reason people don't like vision is that vision is very uncomfortable. That's why people don't like vision. Because, because, <laughs> because vision will move you out of comfort zone into a place of discomfort. Vision will make you save even though you're a spender. Vision will make you trim even though you love to do everything. Vision will limit your choices even though you have many choices. So let, let, let's, let, let's keep going. <laughs> Glory to God. I love what vision makes you disciplined. Paul said, I press forward towards what the mark of the high calling. Do you know that scripture in 1 Corinthians? He says, I press forward towards what the mark of the high calling. Where there is no price, there can't be a press. You didn't get it, right? Where there is no price, there can't what? Be press. The reason why you are not motivated to save, the reason why you, are not, you don't have a drive, is that you don't have a compelling vision. When you have a compelling vision, you will have a drive. Because one of the things vision does is to motivate you. Yes. Yes. No. You just be like, this is, I, I can't continue this way. This is where I'm going to. You know, I see some people that always want to go on holiday. What kind of life do you it's like? You want to go on holiday? I feel like going on holiday. You just came back. I just feel like going again. I'm like, why do you leave? I'm not saying you should not go on holiday, but you can't be planning to go on holiday every month. That's not life. That's something else. People can afford holiday for 10 years. They don't do it. And the reason, someone says, why are you so emphatic on vision? The reason why is that we are in an environment, if you don't see something else, you become rubbish. I'm telling you, the level of mediocrity that most of us are facing in this part of Africa, if you don't channel your eye to see something else, you become, I'm telling you, this is the place where you earn $10,000 and you think you're doing so well. Because all the people that they claim they are rich, just convert your money to pounds. You will see how poor you are. Minimum wage in the U.S. is twenty. Is it twenty? Is it twelve or twenty-four thousand dollars? Who knows? Who, who knows? What, what is it in, in London? What is it in London? What? It's about fifteen thousand pounds. Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. So it's about seventeen thousand pounds. About twenty-four thousand dollars. Just imagine a pound is about eight hundred. So that's literally. The poorest, the, when they say the minimum wage, the poorest of the poorest, they put that end lowest in London, in Britain. They end how much now? They end 15, about how much? Calculate for me, please. Someone is helping me, right? What? 14 million. Like you go to you go to Britain and you uh, where the poorest here you earn fourteen million. The reason I'm saying so is that all of you that think you run big businesses begin to dominate in dollars. You will see how big your business is. 
you will just move from multi-millionaire to hundred thousand a year. And, and the reason, the reason why is that if I don't do this to you, many of you are going to allow the situation to sink you. You become so depressed. You become so confused. You will settle too early. It's too early to settle. There's so much God has in your future. It's too early to settle. There's so much God has in your future. It's too early to settle. There's so much God has for your company. It's too early to settle. It's too early to give up. You can press in, Father. Somebody say, Amen. so early to settle he says as far as your eyes can see just imagine in some parts of the world if you're among the lowest paid you are earning 14 million in our part of the world if you're earning 14 million you're one of the richest people and that's why people just wake up one day like no 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 I i have to travel not because it's a great life I, I don't mind to be among the lowest speed. And I'm okay there. But I'm only saying that if you have a vision, it can happen for you wherever you are. <laughs> Live in Nigeria, but don't think like one. Oh yeah. Let vision change you. Let vision change the way you think. Let vision change the way you think. Uh, all of you below 30 here, I know that there were a few of you here. I want to really talk to you. It's only in Africa that there's that thing that it's until when you're 40 you become rich. Those are not global concepts. Those are demonic strongholds meant to make you poor. And that's why in our, in our country, if a, you know, some of you are not from Nigeria, I'm sorry to explain this to you. In our country, if you drive a very expensive car and you're young, they pack you down. You know why? Logically speaking, you should not be driving that car. You should be walking. So our policemen do not understand that. So they pack you because in their mind you should be a fraud star. They don't really believe that someone can be 25, 27, 28, has a strong fintech that is doing so well, that can provide income and they can buy whatever he wants. And most of the, and listen to me, this is the stronghold of the mind. So most of you that are young begin to postpone your prosperity because of the narrative. Most of you that are young begin to what postpone your prosperity because of the narrative. No, no, no. You know, I'm 24 right now. You know, I'm 26 right now. Am I going to steal? I'm not saying going to steal. You can come up with concepts that can give you a boost ahead of other people. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. I said, Glory to God. Yeah. I said, Glory to God. Yeah. That's a question you need to ask yourself. I know you run a business. When are you going to hit the first one million dollars? It's a figure. When I going to hit the first one million pounds, it's a figure. When I going to do the first ten million dollars, it's a figure. When I going to do the first ten million pounds, it's a figure. When are you going to have hundred people working for your organization? When are you going to have one thousand people working for your organization? He says, as far as your eyes can see, you need to dream of bigger things than Range Rover. Dream of bigger things, visions that change lives. Have a vision that in your state you will be the largest employer of labor. Don't join the talkers, join the doers. See, you have joined harvesters now. In this place, we don't insult God with small thinking. We believe that big thinking inspires God. Hallelujah. Can I tell you what I see in your future? Not too long from here, there are people that will start banks that will be buying existing banks. Those I'm talking to seem to on this side. I receive it in the name of Jesus. There are people that will start fintech that they will go into global partnership in hundreds of millions of dollars. Say I receive it. Glory to God. There are going to be lady CEOs that are going to start and after they've done the first 10 million dollars they said just for you to know i never had to sell i never had to sell my body to get a favor this was the grace of god and the work of my hands where are those ladies are they here hey, where are those ladies are they here are they here all night say i receive it ladies i will stand and when they share their testimonies, all the other ladies that sell on Instagram will be like, my God, we are old school. This is a new school going there. This is success 
Because we live in a country where the common story of life, I'm depressed, I'm discouraged, I'm depressed, I'm discouraged. Everybody's jabber, everybody's jabber. Listen to me. Traveling may not solve your problem. It's vision. You have to first see it. It's as far as your eyes can see. I understand that you came from the backside of the desert. I understand that your parents are not significant. I understand you don't have capital. But listen to me. In the spiritual realm, we use invisible capital to create material things. How do I know this? When God made heaven and earth, he didn't have naira. He didn't have copper. He didn't have pounds. He didn't have all the money. All he had was invisible raw material. He saw something. He spoke something. And he used invisible raw materials to create what? Visible things. What I'm saying to you in essence is this. You can use intangibles to create tangibles. The iPhone was an idea. Idea, intangible, translated. Cryptocurrency was an idea. Intangible became tangible. What I'm saying is that please don't be stuck in your mind. Once you become stuck in your mind, you'll be stuck in life. Let me step back and say that again. Once you become stuck in life, in your mind, you'll be stuck in life. That's why I said to you, living your life to chances leaves you without a chance. I'm not going where everybody's going. I've set my sail. When you see harvesters, you see changing lives. We write it there. So don't compare us to where you came from. Our vision is different. Someone say, I thought this church just prays. I know we pray, but we know prayer cannot do everything by itself. So we talk to you because there must be a change. When you hear people say, I came into this church one year after I just moved from being a borrower, I'm not a business owner. How did it happen? It's transformation like this. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So next Sunday, all of us are coming out with our five-year vision plan. Amen? Yeah. You are writing it. You'll get your husband to write. you get your best friend, your son, friend, you write, and we bring it together. I say, Father, this is what we are believing God for five years. By the middle of the year, I looked at all the things I wrote for 2022. Almost all of them were done by the sixth month. But I wrote something. So the question is this. So the first principle is this. So why is vision important? Because you're going to go as far as you can see. You're going to go what? As far as you can see. Lady, what do you see? I, I just see myself having children. Is that all you see? Someone says, I do deals. Is that what you see? What I love about vision is the discipline it puts on your life. See, vision changes a spender into an investor. You will never know that you can become one. Vision, the capacity of vision to change people. Vision will change someone that is timid, that cannot talk. They become a strong marketer. Someone says, I want to grow. You need vision, sir. Because vision has the capacity to change you. The reason why you have no motivation is that there's no price. You know why? Paul said, I press towards the price of the high calling. There can be no press if there is no price. So, stop struggling with looking for pressing. Look for the price. If there's a price, there will be pressing, sir. And the one that has no vision will work for the one that has a vision. When you see people that have vision pray, their prayer is different. Their prayer is different. They pray visionary prayers. Someone say, I'm moving to the next level. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Your company, where is it going to be in five years? I know you're a tailor. What will you be in five years? What will be your income in five years? What do you want to achieve in five years? A lot of those brands that we talk about are people's names. I think Aston Martin is someone's name. He designed cars. Dutcher and um, Gabbana, people's names. What, what are we going to know you for? What is it going to mean? So, someone, see, the thing is that this is the thing. 
it's how far you can see it how far can you see it whatever you do how far can you see it oh I was just so scared. There's a filling station that most of us know around the corner here in Nigeria. It's called Enyo. A lot of those conversations before it was done was with me. And, and I looked at the guy. He was telling me, he, he was telling me, I would do this, I would do this. And I looked at him. And you know, he was talking, he said, so we'll do this. You know, you know, someone that has no money saying all of these things. I mean, he had some money, but not the kind of money he was talking about. But that's the power of visions. Our vision attracts resources. Yeah. Glory to God. All right. So the next thing is this. When people have vision, why does their vision die? Or why did they give up on their vision? Let's turn to James chapter 4. I want to show you a very, very powerful concept here. James chapter 4. So some people have this vision... They said this is a great speech, but why does the vision die? Why does the vision really die? James chapter 4 verse 33. So I have a vision for this. I have a vision for my business to expand to 100, 100 million in the first year. I have a vision from this. I have a vision. Why does it die? Even when it comes to ministry vision, why does, why does vision die? You know, I will tell you the reason today. I want, to, I want to teach you something today. How to make your vision very strong so that it doesn't die okay james chapter 4 look at what the bible says it says your acts and receive not because your acts what i miss it says your acts in the wrong way why did he act in the wrong way look at the next line your acts that you what you may consume upon what you're lost listen to me everybody ever look up here when the when the benefit of the vision is solely you you will not have a compelling reason for it to happen That's the truth. It's not be compelling. So it says you are asking, but the reason why you are not getting is because you're asking the wrong way because you may consume it upon your loss. So if all your vision is that if I get this, I will have that, I will do this, I will do that. See, that's not strong. The reason why is that the greatest power in the world is the power of love. So when you have vision that is up with helping people the vision becomes stronger let me give an example you'll see someone like bill gates and bill gates will say that one of my target for my money is this i want to what i want to wipe out malaria from africa i hope you understand that my bill gates does not know malaria he is he has never had one except to live in africa but what that does oh let me break down everybody look up here Oh, Lord, help me in Jesus' name. Let me, help me say this in a very simple way. There are three levels of wealth. You're poor. You come out of poverty. You're still close to them. Then, then so that, that place, you're not comfortable. You're still out of it. Then you get to a comfortable place. You are not, you are rich. You're not, no, you're not, you're, but you're rich. It's not, you can't be hungry again. Then you're super rich. Then you're the super, super rich most people this is where they get stuck most people don't get stuck to when they are poor or when they come out of poverty they get stuck in that place where i can't be poor again but i can't say i'm very rich have you asked yourself the reason why before this is the reason why when you want to become very very rich there's a guilt that comes with it when you think when you start having goals of one billion ten billion hundred billion there's a guilt that says ah ah look at around you other people don't have this and you are saying that you are praying some someone in your church is saying father give me ten thousand naira. you are asking for 100 billion uh-huh you, you see you, you, you don't see this so let me tell you something so this wife will never get there this wife will never get there this wife will never get there so because their heart never accepts it it can never happen because everything grows from the inside of the heart what do you do this is a simple thing you do the reason why you can't access that 
at the center of that dream is still you but when you see the world as people i notice the pattern because the truth is that a lot if you feel guilty about your wealth you will not be more you you will not go far you have to be you you should be in a place where you don't feel guilty about it because once you feel guilty about it you have fear once you have fear you will lose your wealth it's a combination of things together so this is what i notice about people the very rich ones when they are asking for those goals of 100 billion 300 billion they will have a goal that is outside themselves so Elon Musk said this it's not even a Christian what did he say he said human beings will self-destruct I need a I need about 200 billion dollars so that when human beings destroy the earth I can house them on mass what he has done is that he has made the goal not about himself so the capa- the guilt goes away because it's from a love motive so all of a sudden it doesn't feel guilty about 200 billion it's more about the mission are you understand what I'm talking, talking about yeah it's more about the mission the same thing bill gates bill gates says if i have all the money he said i want to use all the money to wipe out valeria in africa so all of a sudden it's not about money for him again it's what to become the major reason why it's difficult listen to me if you want to make your vision strong this is how I make it if you want to make your vision strong if you want to make your vision stay this is what you do right reasons right benefits of your vision to other people apart from you you know what i said right benefits of your vision to all that people apart from you so right write something like this when i make the first hundred million i will be able to pay for the school fees of my brother my sister and his children in the village i will do this and this and this and this the moment you do that you are giving your vision a stronger purpose for it to come to life how what do i mean this is the principle in the bible the bible says faith works by what love so although i'm releasing my faith i'm pairing my faith with love how am i pairing my faith i'm tying up love motive to my faith people that write their vision this way it doesn't fail and i've given this story before let me give you the story let me say it again every year ever look at me every year and now we'll go to the temple father i want it out ah come on hey she never got pregnant the day the day she got pregnant she changed her prayer she went to the temple say father forget about child though. somewhere your prophet is growing old his children are not walking in your way all i want to be is to be the person that will carry the person that will replace him hey. that day she got pregnant with all the time she was saying give me a child yeah ah cry she didn't get results the day she added love to her faith and say i don't want a child just to show my step wife mother my step wife i have a child i want a child because you need a prophet and let me tell you something that thing she said was dangerous for her how do i know the biggest thing she wanted was what she gave away the other i'm talking about what she wanted the most was what she gave away that that, all she wanted was a child and imagine i'm going to god in prayer and say that all i want is a child but this listen lord i don't want it again all i now want is to become a medium to become the person to which you can have a child so you can have a prophet Are, are you getting me all the time she prayed she never received did you notice let me tell you how this thing works in the bible when Jesus was hungry in Mark chapter 4, chapter, in, sorry, in John chapter 4 and chapter 5, he Bible says he was so hungry, he stayed. He did not turn stone to bread or multiply bread. He sent his disciples to what? Go into the market and go and buy bread. But when the multitude were hungry, what did he do? He multiplied bread. He understood the power concept, sir. The bread is not to be multiplied for me to eat. It's when it comes to other people, let's multiply for them. Glory to God. Why are people's vision stuck? I want to make 100 billion. For what? When I make 100 billion, I'll buy a range. I'll move to banana. Bible says something. The way faith works. Faith works by what? Love. When you say that, low level. <laughs> they are not ready. Take it higher. I want 100 million. First of all, there's, there are these three people that I know that need school fees. I want to sponsor them forever that one two three people in the church i attend we meet in the tent i want to begin to talk to the pastor about erecting a structure you know that kind of thing there are people you by the time you begin to say that everything will change 
the reason why is that you have made your vision more solid in fact let me tell you why the reason you will drive for your vision the most is this because in your heart you understand if my vision does not happen a lot of people will suffer are you here somebody are you here somebody so people lose their vision because a lot of them you know you know a lot of their vision is based on them a lot of their vision is based on them a lot of their vision is based on them so the so the first thing is about vision is that what do you see the second thing is that how you make your vision strong and let me tell you something this i've told you don't just say it to yourself when you write your vision write it below your vision and say the reason why i want to have this vision is that i want to do this and this and this and this the vision will become stronger so i need people that will say i want to become the first female governor in nigeria so that i can explain and show the pattern you know by the time you say it, it becomes strong i want to become the f- i want to become the ceo of so so and so bank and this and this and this and the md because of this and this and this it becomes strong because what makes your vision strong is that it's not really about yourself it's about what other people so there are other people that will benefit from this vision when some girl, when some single girls are praying for husband and father uh, is it that will continue is that will keep looking at me who is going to love me who is going to take care of me who is going to do this who is going to do that who is going to father and you're looking at me this way that's not to pray father i know you have blessed me with the gift of stability and wisdom give me a man that needs this gift let me help him get there <laughs> did you see what just happened like, even you see when you pray this way there's a way that faith will rise there's a deep the, the, look at first prayer father I look at how my life is i'm just bored i i am horny sometimes i can't even have sex you know for, father oh, that, look at all oh, my friends are married and i'm keeping on serving you see how you're praying that prayer does not have faith you can tell that prayer does not have divine energy change the prayer father there are men that are going places and they need a pillar of emotional support there are men that need wisdom and they need peace at home lord this is my prayer that one of those your sons that is going places ah yeah i got us (laughs) one of those your son that is going places that even when business is very stormy that i can provide peace comfort and stability please send him my way that i will become the angel at home of peace to him ah when you pray that kind of prayer people that are praying for a job father give me a job yeah 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 see, see the father i need money that's why i need this job and this see, see the prayer very selfish it says you ask and receive not why you ask and miss you ask to consume upon yourself how do you ask father this is the job i want lord i'm praying there are there are entrepreneurs laboring night and day they can't get to their goals i'm trained as a marketer i'm praying that you give me an entrepreneur that needs just my skill for his company to scale so that when i join his company in the first year i bring you 50 million ah, when you pray that way even the angels know who you are praying about because the entrepreneurs are also praying for you so god will begin to connect you together the problem is that our prayer and vision are very selfish and the bible says you ask and what you miss it because you ask and miss Men are praying. He said, Pastor, I want, I, want, I want a fine girl. Fine, you know, fine girl. Fine girl. Ah. When they talk like that, you can tell what's in their mind. It's a fine girl. You know, the fine girl. Eh? Someone, that, someone that is very submissive. You can see the mind of someone that is very submissive. You know, because in their mind, they must shut up. I tell you what to do. Man, if you want to have a wife, he said, Lord, you have provided me with resources and leadership. Give me a woman I can take care of. A woman that I can take care of, that can allow him to take care of her. And one, it, it, when you pray that way, you are not praying that I'm a blessing, sir. Glory to God. Are you receiving this? Are you receiving this? 
Glory to God. So why do people forget their vision? Why don't people vision fly? People's vision does not fly because it's very me focused. It's very me focused. It's begin to change it. Begin to change it. Many of you are here. Why are you praying for a car? Ah, John has a car. Anna has a car. Jennifer has a car. Even Shinene has a car. Why won't I have a car? Simple prayer. Father, I'm praying for deals that will make me get a car. When I'm going to church, I want to carry people with me. Why won't you have a car? See, God is very powerful. See what it says. He said, I shall not die but what leave. That what? To be playing games? No. He said, the principle is this. The reason, because many Christians say, he said, I shall not die but leave. That's not the scripture. He says, I shall not die but leave to declare the glory of God. Meaning that my existence will be meaningful. That's why I will have long life. So if I'm not going to have a meaningful existence, you should not be praying for long life. This is the reason why people have money that, make, that gives them trouble. Because the money came without meaning. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So you're, you're, you're in church now. They say we need, we, need, we need this, we need that. We say, Father, please, I want to do this in church because of this and this. That's what he pray. Someone says, hey, I will upset in church but I don't have time. I don't have money. It's a very simple prayer. Where I walk, there's no time. Father, please give me a job that will give me money and give me time. So that I can have time to save you. See the prayer. See the prayer. The mother of John and, J- um, John and James came to Jesus Christ. He said, he said Jesus, let, let my son, one at your right, one at your left. Jesus Christ said, you're asking the wrong thing. Because what you're asking is based on you. Ask based on others. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say Hallelujah. The last thing as we conclude today is this. That's the last thing. When I have a vision, what do I begin to do next? I want to show you something in Hebrews chapter 11. How do I know the next thing to do? So I have the vision of importing cars. I have this vision of this software. I have vision of this raising these children. What do I do? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5, 15 rather. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 15. I want to show you something here. I want to show you something. Are we there? Just a minute before I go to Hebrews 11. Let's flip a little. Proverbs 16 verse 9. Proverbs 16 verse 9. Let's go quickly. The Bible in Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9. See what the Bible says. The Bible says what? A man's heart does what? Does what? It says, this is what the Bible says. On the inside of you, there is a manufacturing machine that creates pathways for things to happen. It says a man's heart devises way. It's a GPS. It's a, it's a heart map. Once you put inside, I'm going here. It says your heart will create a pathway for it to happen. That's what it's saying. So this is what I'm saying to you. So look at what it says. A man's heart divides way. So this is what you have to do. If you have a vision, link to your vision must enter into your heart. Once your vision enters into your heart, there will be a pathway. Once your vision enters into your heart, there will be a pathway. The reason why you don't have a pathway yet is that your vision has not entered into your heart. Why? A heart, a man's man devises his way. So what I want to teach you this morning is how to take your vision and put it into your heart so that your heart can create the Google bar for it to happen. Are you listening to me? Because a lot of people have vision, but what next will I do? I want to show you. So, the first I want to show you was the concept that the heart of a man does what devises its way. So, if I don't have my way, it's because my heart has not devised it. Or I'm ignorant of what my heart has devised. So, I must learn how to take the vision, how to put in my heart, so that my heart can devise it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. Just two scriptures I will close. Genesis chapter 6 verse 6 verse 5. What does it say? Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. See what the Bible says here. It says, And God saw the weaknesses of man was great in the earth. Why was wickedness great? Look at how the heart works. So, the wickedness of man was great in the earth. That what? That every imagination of his thoughts of his heart was what? Only evil continually. The reason why there was wickedness on the outside was because the programming on the inside was what? Evil imagination. So, if I can program my mind, I can change my outcome. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
Okay, now let's see how to do it practically. Let's see how to do it practically. Here, which of the long verse 15. This will explain it finally, and we'll go. And I'll just teach you the practical dynamics. Hebrews 11 verse 15. So someone says, I have a vision. What do I do about it? Long 15. Hebrews 11 15. Let's read together. One to go. Are you ready? Ready? One to go. Let's read. One to go. And truly, if they had been... M- Take note of the word mindful of the country from whence what? They will have had what? Mindfulness creates opportunities. That's what I'm going to. He says, if they had been mindful they will have had opportunity someone says how do i create how do i start let me say it again someone asks this question and says what when i have a vision where do i start from the moment you become mindful your mindfulness of your vision will create opportunities a lot of people always ask a question i have an idea but i need opportunities where do you find opportunity it's mindfulness that creates opportunities it's mindfulness that creates opportunities it's what mindfulness of your vision not limitation if you are mindful of your limitation you will see opportunity to be limited if you are mindful of your vision you will see what opportunities for your vision to happen a lot of people are not mindful of their vision they are mindful of their limitations to their vision so all they see is the limitation to their vision the moment you become mindful of your vision you begin to see ways your vision can happen that was why when they were there just ask ask the disciple how many bread do we have he said and he says he said, what are these amongst people? You know, because he was mindful of limitation. What is five laws? Jesus was mindful of vision. He was saying, let it down. Let it multiply. What are you mindful of? Are you mindful of capital you do not have? Or what you see? Are you mindful, are you mindful of what you don't have? Or what you have? Are you here? You know something? When I see entrepreneurs, every time I see them, they talk about their problems. I can tell that they are stuck. They think they are stuck because of their problem. They are stuck because of their minds. They just capital. That's why you are stuck. You are stuck because you are not mindful. Very powerful scripture. Put it back there. Something. This is not just Bible principle. This is an established principle. In the world of um, of science, this is called neuroscience. What is it called in science? It's saying that this is what it's called in in science. Whatever you're mindful of, you will create a neurological pathway. In science, it's a science principle. You create what a neurological pathway. If you keep thinking about something, you will find a way to get it done. Look at what it says. And truly, it says truly, if they had been mindful of the country they came from, they would have had opportunity to what? To be what? To have returned. It said if they were mindful about their past, they would go back there. Question, what are you mindful about? What do you worry about the most is what will happen in your life? Because worry is mindfulness. I'm so worried I'll not get the money, you will not get it. I'm so worried I'll not get the customer, you will not get it. Because, see, you must train yourself to be mindful of the right things. How do I do that practically? Every morning. This is what I attempt to do every morning. I'm not 100%. I take my goals. I begin to declare it. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I don't just take my goals like, I take two goals. The goals, general goals, then the goals I want to achieve that day. I begin to declare it. You know why? When I wake up in the morning, I want my mind to be full of things that are good so as i begin to declare it you know what i notice when i begin to declare that I, in jesus name i have that fund i have that capital I, i'm declaring those things my mind will just tell me during the day why not talk to this person to go into a partnership how did that happen because i was mindful i created opportunity because i was mindful i created opportunity you know what most people are mindful of most people are never mindful of their vision because it's not something that is in front of you they're always mindful of their limitations of their problems and the more mindful you are about your problems and limitations the more it happens to you glory to god i said glory to god 
What happened in Egypt? All the people that left Israel and um, Egypt and went to promised land, they were mindful about what Egypt. Did they get to promised land? Never. They all died in the wilderness. If you don't want to die in the wilderness, it's time to stop being mindful of the wilderness and the challenges. Be focused on what you are going to. Did you notice that no, none of them was focused on the promised land? They were all talking about Egypt. They were all talking about garlic. They went back to it. Many of you, you will keep talking about your problems. You will go back to it. You will keep talking about your single state. You will go back to it. Be mindful of what you want. It's a training you give yourself. He says, if they were mindful, they would have had opportunity. Someone says, ah, oh, oh, yeah, I don't have time again. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because many of you that say it's an opportunity, it's a lie. You know why? Opportunity is a perspective. That, that's the truth. Nobody has failed because there was no opportunity. Because what you mean as opportunity is resourcefulness. It's the ability to see something and see the opportunity inside it. I am a common eye. Everybody saw Goliath, they saw a giant. David saw Goliath, he saw the opportunity inside Goliath. People, Nigerians are ancient planes shipping abroad. What is he telling you? What is he telling you? What is he telling you? Listen to me. It's because they are seeing this country enter planes. You will see white people in droves. I read, how many of you read the documentary recently? That white Brit Britons are returning to Nigeria in mass. Who saw it online? You saw it? White Britons are returning. Sorry, sorry. Um, Nigerian Britons are returning to Nigeria in mass in tech industry because of opportunities here. We we are taking up and taking up. The reason why is that it's what you are mindful you see. You are in Nigeria, you can't see it, you take off. They are there, they see it, they come back. Why? It's not that opportunities are scarce. It's mindfulness that determines opportunity. Let's pray. Glory to God. <laughs> Your spirit and mind are together. <laughs> Let's start about prayer.